Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, continuing our discussion on the logistic regression from the previous video where we have left, I will talk about log of odds and maximum likelihood, how a straight line is fit to the data set and that is in turn converted into the sigma itself. Okay, so let's start. This video is going to be important in order to understand about log of odds and the probabilities. Okay, so please watch this video till the end. So starting with we have our hypothesis, right? So, this is our logistic regression hypothesis, also called a sigmoid function, correct? This is our sigmoid function, and this theta transpose x in turn is represented as theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 up to theta n x n. And thetas are our learnable parameters, right? Now, in case of logistic regression, these thetas, right, are presented in, in terms of presented. in terms of log of odds okay we are actually fitting a straight line initially to the given data points for classification and the parameters that we have that we will be learning are presented in terms of log of odds okay in order to fit the straight line in case of linear regression the y axis would take the values from minus infinity to plus infinity correct but in case of logistic regression the y axis takes only values between 0 and 1. Why? Because these are our probabilities, correct? Probabilities. So, first we have to convert this 0 to 1 line on y axis to negative infinity to plus infinity in order to fit a straight line. Okay. So, how we do that? So, let us say we have a sigmoid curve here. Okay. It can be something like this. This is x, this is y, 0 0.5, 0, 1. So, this is our sigmoid curve, right? So, now we will convert this to have the y axis values ranging from plus infinity to negative infinity. So, this x remains same as of this axis, okay? Now, how do we convert this y axis from 0 to 1 to negative infinity to positive infinity? So, in order to convert this, we make use of log of odds. Okay? So, there is something called as log of odds and the formula for that is log of p by 1 minus p. Okay? So, this will be 0. 1, 2, 3, up to so on, so on, up to positive infinity, like this minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so on, up to negative infinity. So, this 0.5 to 1 will be converted to 0 to positive infinity, 0 0.5 to 1 probability will be converted into 0 to positive infinity log of odds, right. So, similarly, from 0.5 to 0, the log of odds would range from 0 to negative infinity. Okay? So, this is how we convert our sigmoid or the probabilities on y axis which are ranging from 0 to 1. We convert them to log of odds which will range from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? Now, now that we have converted the probabilities to log of odds, what we do? What we do is we fit the candidate line to the data points. Okay, So, this is our x axis, this is our y axis, this is positive infinity, this is negative infinity. right? Now, let us say we have the data points at negative infinity whose uh, probabilities are 0. Okay, So, the probabilities are 0 would be situated at negative infinity, whose probabilities are 1 would be situated at positive infinities. Okay? So, something like this. right? So, let me just redraw it so that you won't be confused. So, it will be looking something like these things. Okay? Now, we will consider this as our best fit candidate line. Best fit candidate line. If you can relate it to the equation of straight line, y is equal to mx plus c. Right? So, C is our y-intercept which is cutting somewhere here at the negative y-axis. 
and m is the slope of the line. So, for each unit increase in x by how much y will be increasing or decreasing that will be determined by value m, right. So, in case of univariate linear regression, if you consider the simple example theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1, right. So, this relates to x here, this m will be theta 1 and c will be theta 0, right. So, now what we do is we will project these data points on this best candidate line that we have initialized, okay. Based on the initialization of theta values, we arrive at this particular line and we project our actual data points onto this particular line, right. So, these are our projections. So, this point will be projected over here, this will be here, this will be projected over here. Now, for each of these data points, the corresponding value on the y axis is the log of odds, okay. So, log of odds, correct. Now, now that we have log of odds for each of the data points, we will convert these log of odds back to probability so that instead of this particular straight line, we can again get back to our sigmoid curve. Right. So, how we can do that? So, all we have to do is we have to substitute in this particular formula. Probability using log of odds is calculated as p is equal to e power log of odds divided by 1 plus e to the power log of odds. Okay. So, this is how we convert the log of odds into probability. Again, once we convert the log of odds into probability, the values will be between 0 and 1, right. Now, based on the log of odd values for each of the data points that we have, we will convert it into probability and plot it according to the probability that we get x and y. So, this particular line now is shrunk and turned into the shape of this S curve, the sigmoid curve, okay. And the range of values it can get is 0 and 1. Why? Because we have calculated the probabilities from log of odds that we have arrived at in arrived in the previous step in this particular step. Okay. Now that we have these probabilities, right? So these probabilities are also called as these probabilities are also called as the likelihoods of the individual data points. Why these are called as likelihoods? Because we have calculated these probabilities based on the log of odds, right. We are not considering this probability as area under the curve, okay. Just remember this, this is not area under the curve. Instead, this is the likelihood, why? Right? Because we have calculated the probabilities using log of odds, okay. So, now, we have converted log of odds to probabilities and then we have arrived at this particular sigmoid curve, okay. This is our sigmoid curve. We have shrunk the straight line into this particular sigmoid curve. Now that we have arrived at this particular curve, we calculate the likelihood of, likelihood of the data points. given this sigmoid curve, okay. Based on the sigmoid curve, we calculate the likelihood of the given data points. So, how do we calculate the likelihood of the data points? So, for that, let us consider we have only three examples, okay, x1, x2, x3, okay. And this is a univariate regression problem. It has only one independent variable and one dependent variable. Now that we have these three examples, how do we calculate the likelihood? So, in order to calculate the likelihood, all we do is we multiply the probabilities of this particular instance belonging to class positive with, with the probability of this particular instance belonging to class negative. Similarly, we multiply all the probabilities for all the instances. So, how can we write that probability that x1 is equal to 1 into probability that x2 is equal to 1 
into probability that x3 belongs to class 1. So, for example, you can consider these three are our size of the tumors, ok, size of tumors and this probability equal to 1 means the probability that these data points belongs to cancerous, cancerous category, ok. So, this is probability that these three points belong to cancerous category. Similarly, we multiply with these three data points belonging to non-cancerous category. So, how we can mention that x1 equal to 0, probability that x2 equal to 0 into probability that x3 is equal to 0, right. Just remember the probability will always equate uh, always range from 0 and 1, right? Maximum value it can have is 1. So, the probability that a given data point belongs to 1 plus probability that a given data point belongs to class 0 always equates to 1, right? So, since we have probability that x is equal to 1, how we can calculate x probability that x equal to 0? It is simple, right? It is 1 minus probability of x is equal to 1. This will give us probability of x equal to 0. Correct. Now, this line gives us the probability that each data point belongs to positive class. Okay. So, we can calculate the probability that each data point belongs to negative class. How? Using this particular formula and calculating this likelihood. Now, instead of multiplying the values, to make it easy, we apply logarithm to this product. Okay. After applying the logarithm, this multiplication will get converted into addition. Okay. So, that is the property of logarithm. So, after this, the equation becomes log of, I will just write p is equal to 1 into log of, I will just say p1 equal to 1, p2 equal to 1 into log of, okay, sorry, this is not multiplication. Now, this will be plus because we are applying logarithm. Log of p3 equal to 1 plus log of p1 equal to 0 plus log of p2 equal to 0 plus log of p3 equal to 0, right. So, this is our log of likelihood, right. Now, for any candidate line that we had earlier initiated, we want this log of likelihood to be maximum, ok. We want this to be maximum value. Why we want this to be maximum? Just think and answer it in comment section. I will provide the answer in the description after few days once you guys have come to the answer, ok. If you guys do, do not understand how it works, just post it in comment section, I will get back to you. Now that we know we need this value to be maximum, in the next iteration, this particular line will be rotated. Let us say it takes this particular orientation now. Now, based on this orientation, the log of odds will change for each of the data points. Since the log of odds changes, the probability or the likelihood changes for each data point. Since the probability changes, the likelihood of this particular shaped curve, this shape will also get changed. As the orientation of the line changes, the shape of this particular sigmoid may also get change, ok. So, this may look like this or it may even take the form somewhere like this, ok. So, it depends on the orientation of the line, the shape of the sigmoid curve will matter ok so once we have this we calculate the log of all the log li log likelihood of all the data points using this particular formula here and we want this to be maximum so for the different orientation of this particular line we will have different parameters right thetas so based on the parameters thetas which give us this maximum value for the log likelihood we will choose those particular parameters ok. So, this is all about maximum log likelihood. Now, if you can relate this log likelihood or log of odds 
sorry, not log of odds, just relate this log of likelihood to the cost function that we have. J of theta is equal to minus 1 by m summation of i is equal to 1 to m, right? yi into log of h theta of xi, correct? And then 1 minus yi, I'll just move this aside, 1 minus yi into log of 1 minus h theta of xi. So, if you guys can see any rebel resemblance between the maximum likelihood calculation formula and the cost function formula, I think you guys would understand why we say maximum likelihood here and why we have to minimize this cost here. We have to minimize this cost, right? And here we want the maximum likelihood value. So, that is it about this particular video on log likelihood, maximum likelihood and log of odds. If you guys have not understood about the formulas here that I have written, uh, how, we, how do we calculate the probability using log of odds? No need to worry. You do not need to understand the derivation, right? This is just for the information purpose that I have given you. Otherwise, if you guys have understood the concept that how the logistic regression works and what these parameters represent, it will be easy for you to understand the decision boundary, something called as decision boundary. Okay. So, if you guys have understood this video, you guys would have already come to know about the decision boundary that I will be covering in my next video. So, if you guys have any questions, just post it in comment section. I will try to get back to you with the answers. Till we see in the next video. Happy learning. Bye bye.